In this video, I'm going to demonstrate preparing clay to be thrown on the potter's wheel. Generally, we refer to that as wedging. Uh, some people call it kneading in some parts of the world. But before I do the traditional wedging or kneading techniques, I want to show cutting and stacking as a way to blend clays together. So you may have two different clay bodies that you want to blend, or you may have a soft bag and a hard bag, or just a really messy bag of clay. This technique saves a lot of uh, physical exertion and it makes it a lot easier and it's called cutting and stacking because you're going to stack the clay on top of each other and then cut it and then stack it again so let's do it so i'm going to drop the dark clay onto the lighter clay and give it a little push downwards so i have two sections of those clay you can easily see that i'm going to take it over to the wire and cut down through and i'm going to do this slowly at first so you can see without turning the clay at all <laughs> i just do it so that those are in the same horizontal position and then i'll take the other one and really slam it on top so now there's one two three four push it down a little bit take it back over to the wire cut it the same way slam that down I'm putting it face to face so you can really see it one two three four five six seven eight right each time you do this, it doubles, so it's uh, exponential stacking. So now we're at 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. That's as far as I can count. So at this point, you can see that it's marbleized. <laughs> the clay has been blended into each other a lot more than if you spent the same amount of time with the traditional wedging techniques. And you can, you can keep doing this. You can really get the clay to blend. So it's like two to the n minus one, I think is the math. I don't know, but it works really well. So cutting and stacking is a great way to get your blending started and it's a good way to wedge I do it with all fresh bags of clay it really loosens it up it gets it easier to wedge now I'm going to show you the more traditional wedging techniques so let's take about half of this clay and set it aside I'm going to put it on this bag so it doesn't dry out this is a plaster table the clay doesn't stick to the plaster the plaster draws out moisture so don't forget your bags of clay or your balls of clay on the plaster it'll dry them out too much there's a few different ways to wedge. The first way I'm going to demonstrate is the way that I suggest most people try for the first time, which is the ram's head technique. It's more of a symmetrical way to do it than the second technique, which I'll show, which is a spiral wedge, at least the way that I do it. So starting with a lump of clay, you just want to approach the wedging table or your surface straight on and put your hands on the ends of that. If it were like a loaf of bread, you're down at the heels of the bread. You roll the clay back a little bit and then push down and forward. So your heels really dig into the clay. You roll the clay and you push down and forward. And you just repetitively do that. And if <coughs> things go well, you'll end up with this thing that looks like a part of a ram's head. That's what they call it that way. So you get these ridges appearing and then you need to keep doing it to get it to blend thoroughly and you can see there that there was an air bubble that has been popped and it's going to work its way through the clay so part of the reason for wedging is to remove air bubbles to get the clay more consistent is another reason it softens the clay up it makes it feel softer because clay is like ketchup sitting in a bottle it just stiffens up as it sits as you wedge it it softens up, makes it easier to throw. So I like to do it right before I throw. And the more you wedge it, the kind of nicer it is to throw. So there's no magic number of times that you need to do this. But generally speaking, I would say at least 25 times, but I don't know. Other people may do it totally differently. Um, and it kind of depends on your clay. So you can see that the marbleization is there's another air bubble, so I'm still working air bubbles out, but it's no longer marbleized. It looks like one consistent color of clay. 
So that's the ram's head technique. And let me show you a few things that um, often happen to people as they learn this. One is that instead of that shape, they end up with something that looks like a pancake. It's like flat, <laughs> really not a loaf of bread or a ram's head. And that's just caused by pushing too hard and too far. So you don't need to smear the clay like that. That's a bad move. Instead, you want to have a really short bursts. So you just push with good force, but not very far. Just a short burst downwards and repetitively do that short action and you won't end up with that flat thing. Another thing that happens is the clay will get really long. You'll end up with a baguette. So all of a sudden the clay is ending up way out here and that's not being wedged out there. And it just suddenly it's like, whoa, what's going on? And that's caused by having your hands too far towards the center. So what I like to teach is to keep your hands on the outsides with a little bit of pressure going towards the middle and that keeps that from happening. So you get more into the ram's head. So those are the two main things that I see happen. Wedging like anything else takes some practice. I actually don't wedge this way so it's even a little bit awkward for me to do this still even though I do teach it because I think it's a good simple way to learn. Um, I prefer to do more of a spiral technique. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. It's just a variation. So let me do it first and then I'll explain it a little bit. Here's a good air bubble right there with all that stuff that we were doing. So you can see that I'm, I can go a little bit faster. Each stroke is uh, less difficult for me to do because I don't have to lift the clay up quite as much. It kind of spins on the top. So the way to do this is to not hold your two hands symmetrically like I did with the ram's head. The ram's head was like this. Instead, I'm going to turn them so that my two hands meet like at a right angle. That right angle is right here on the conch shell shape. And then other than that, it's actually really similar. So the hand position is a little bit different, but my heels are digging in here and here. And you roll it back. And what I like to do is think about a little circle going this direction. So each time the clay is spinning in that circle. And whether you're spiral wedging or ram's head wedging, when you feel like you've wedged it enough, or if you're counting or you have some kind of system, I need to do a little more. I'll often watch this for air bubbles. You need to think about what shape you want to end up with because it's not actually a very great shape to put on the wheel if you're going to throw this. And so let's do 10 more. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now I feel like I've done enough. I'm going to continue on with the wedging technique, but with lighter pressure each time. Lighter, lighter, lighter. And rolling it backwards, I can get rid of that giant lump that was there. And then I hold it here and use my hands to whack the rest. And now if I was going to throw this amount of clay on the wheel, a nice round bottom, stick it on like that. There's a lot of theories about which direction you wedge and put it on the wheel. And personally, I don't really pay too much attention to that. I, I wedge it around the bottom and put it on the wheel and throw that way. Um, and it's good to wedge an amount of clay that works for you. You can wedge two smaller pieces and put them together and throw them on the wheel. And there's all kinds of techniques for that. You can wedge a large amount of clay and cut it into smaller sections and throw many pieces. So do what is easiest for you to get your hands around. Thank you.